This video illustrates the flexibility of Visage for exploratory analysis, as well as the ability to save previous analyses to make them easier to perform in the future. Imagine exploring the NHANES dataset for the first time. Dragging the dataset to the Schema Visualization tool shows that it has been organized into two tables, a family table and a subject table, with the relationship family member linking them. Both tables include many attributes. Many of the attributes are of data type number or the data type yes, no, blank, but applicable. There are so many attributes that it is useful to explore them as if they were data. Looking first at subjects, we select all applicable attributes and drag them to a visual query tool. The summary representation shows that there are exactly 238 of them. Dragging a dynamic query histogram widget onto entropy shows their variability in information content. An attribute that has one value for all 30,000 subjects has an entropy of log 1, which equals 0 bits of information. An attribute that has a different value for all 30,000 subjects has an entropy of log 2 of 30,000, or about 15 bits of information. This whole range from 0 to 15 is covered, with peaks around 0 and 1 bits. NHANES metadata includes a topic for each attribute. The most frequent topic is Household Youth Questionnaire, followed by Demographic, and five other values. Deselecting the most common topic shows that only 34 attributes have any of the less common topics. The entropy distribution for this subset includes all the highest values. The two box plots on top of the histogram summarize the conditional and unconditional distribution. The median entropy of the selected attributes is significantly higher than that of all attributes. Later we will see why this is so. The data types of the attributes can also be examined. Navigating from each attribute to its data type and aggregating the data types find 62 distinct data types. A dynamic query widget shows more quantitatively the number of attributes whose type is number or another quantitative scale versus those whose type is yes, no, or another nominal scale. A chart can show these properties for all the attributes individually. We can design a chart with Sagebrush, which works like a drawing program. We drag a chart icon to the workspace and add a mark to it. Double-clicking shows its graphical properties. We drag Topic and Entropy to the X and Y position properties and Data Type to Color. We place a text label icon above the mark and show its properties. We drag attribute name to its text property. Finally, we press the button to create the visualization. The visualization is resized for better legibility. Now it is apparent that the only attributes that approach an entropy of 15 are sequence number, which is the unique ID for subjects, and family sequence number, which is the unique ID for families. We would expect that subject ID has an entropy of 15 bits. As we'll see below, families have about two members, so it makes sense that family ID has about one bit less entropy than subject ID. There are many household youth questions with low entropy. Each of the other topics have some attributes described in context, such as survey parameters and dates, which are relevant to all subjects and families, so they are quite variable and therefore of higher entropy. In contrast, many of the youth questions, such as months since last hospitalization, do not apply to all subjects and so have less variability and lower entropy. This explains the difference found earlier with the box plots. It appears that some youth questions have an entropy of zero, which could be a bug. Zooming in shows that they are all actually non-zero. The lowest entropies are for questions where only a few subjects would be expected to say yes or to have a non-zero value, such as those about rheumatic fever. It makes sense that the entropy is low for these questions. For the moment, let's sacrifice completeness for legibility. We add a diversity sampling widget to the visualization. This will add data only as long as there is no occlusion. We can then pick attributes in different parts of the entropy topic space for more detailed investigation. Let's see what might explain subjects' general health. 
it may be interesting to see which family attributes affect this. Since we already saved a visualization to browse attributes, we can just drag the family data type to it. Since the data type isn't an attribute, Visage can't place it on the chart, so it adds it to a timeout box. That way we can navigate to the attributes right there instead of having to do it in a table and drag all the results as before. Explicit navigation from the attributes to their data types is unnecessary because it is built into the visualization. Some likely explanatory attributes include the number of years lived at the same address and the marital status of the family reference person. We make a new query starting with all 17,000 families and select a random subset of about half of them to explore. We need to be able to access this subset and its complement in the future as we explore more or test hypotheses. Encoding interesting data subsets with binary attributes is so useful that Visage provides a special shortcut. Rather than type a formula, just drag the subset onto an attribute definition widget. The required SQL expression is inserted and we type return to accept it. Then the new attribute can be renamed to something meaningful. Once hypotheses have been formulated, we can test them on the families with a value of false for this attribute. We then navigate to the 17,000 members of these 8,000 families. On average, therefore, there are about two members per family. In this interface, when there are more than 40 attributes, none are shown initially. The general health attribute is dragged to the subject node. We drag a DQ widget to it and select only the subjects in poor or fair health. We seek possible explanatory family attributes for these 564 subjects' lower health status. We drag the selected family attributes to the family node. Then we add a dynamic query widget to each. Comparing the conditional distribution of families with at least one member whose health status is low to the distribution of all families, we look for differences in shape. For nominal attributes, a hash mark on each value shows the number of families that would be selected if the attribute were independent of the subject's health. For married, spouse, and household, the hash mark is to the right of the actual number of families. Therefore, fewer families with low health status members have the spouse in the household than for families in general. The hash marks do not indicate whether the difference is significant, so further investigation may be worthwhile. For years at the same address, the box plots show that the median is somewhat higher for the target group. However, the difference is of only borderline significance. After further examination of these and other attributes, we may hypothesize that no spouse or an absent spouse explains low health status. Then traditional hypothesis testing applies. This analysis included interactive data manipulation to select a random subset, link subjects to families, and filter based on attribute values. Interactive visualization design allowed building a reusable tool for browsing attributes, which incorporated both data manipulation and visualization. These operations were accomplished rapidly using drag and drop, sliders, and a few menus. While the operations initially seem complicated, so do those in any other current system that can perform these database and visualization operations. With IDEA, we hope to simplify the operations further and make this kind of analysis available in a public licensed, portable, robust, documented, and user-tested package based on World Wide Web Consortium and other standards for compatibility with other programs and with data repositories.